the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We acknowledge with respect the territory, the history, spirituality, and culture of the indigenous peoples with whom the Upper Canada Treaties were signed and the territory wherein our church resides and our responsibility as treaty members. We also honor the heritage and gifts of Métis people. May our actions be guided by our commitment to reconciliation. Welcome to St. Paul's Westdale. It is not the gathering we had intended, but for yours and everyone's safety, we are gathering virtually, but we can still gather and we're delighted to be with you and your families on this most holy night. There will be a time when those who are present here in the building will be receiving communion, and we invite you to make your spiritual communion to pray to receive Jesus in your heart at that time. We start with the hymn at the gathering, it came upon the midnight clear.
Let us pray. Eternal God, this holy night is radiant with the brilliance of your one true light. As we have known the revelation of that light on earth, bring us to see the splendor of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us hear the story of the birth of Jesus. We're going to hear the story of the Nativity. Our story starts with just Mary and Joseph. Now about the time that the census takes place, there was a ruler named Caesar Augustus, and he ordered a census to be taken. A census is a kind of record keeping where you count everybody that's been born. Everyone had to travel to his or her hometown to be counted in the census. So Joseph went from Nazareth all the way to Bethlehem, and he took his fiancée Mary, who was pregnant, along with him. While they were in Bethlehem, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to a healthy baby boy who was her firstborn son. Mary wrapped her baby in a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no room anywhere else. A manger is a kind of box that's used to feed farm animals like cows and sheep and goats and donkeys. Now, very close by, there were shepherds camping out in a big open field, looking up at the beautiful stars. It happened to be their turn to watch the sheep overnight. Also, that's what shepherds do, they watch sheep. Suddenly, the angel Gabriel stood among them and the glory of God shone all around them. Can you imagine if an angel showed up in front of you and the light of God was all around you? You might be a little freaked out. And they were. But the angel Gabriel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which are meant for all people. A baby has been born in the city of David, a savior, which is Christ the Lord. Look for the baby wrapped in the blanket, lying in the manger. Suddenly, Gabriel was joined by a huge choir of angels and they were singing God's praise. They were singing glory to God in the highest and peace to all the people on earth.
As the choir of angels disappeared into the light, the shepherds talked it over. They decided, hey, let's go to Bethlehem. Um, let's go as fast as we can to see ourselves what God has revealed to us. Sure enough, they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Seeing was believing, they told everyone who could listen to them, that they met with the angels who told them all about the special child. All who heard the angels of the all, all who heard the story of the angels were really amazed. Good Christians all rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now give heed to what we say, Jesus Christ is born today. Oxen asked before and now, and he is in the manger now. It's a boy. I'm the father of two daughters, and I never got a chance to say that. But I did get a chance to sort of ooze all of my delight at the birth of our children. And remember particularly calling from Boston to Montreal, uh, Boston where my wife Connie and I were, uh, to um, uh, Montreal and Oakville, to tell our parents the good news. Um, I don't know if it was my mother-in-law's allergy to long distance, although I was using the payphone, and I, you, some of you will have to have that explained to you what a payphone is. Uh, I was using the payphone, and I was quite happy to spend a bit of money to bask together with my loved ones, but they were going to get off the phone quickly. That's lovely, dear. Thank you for calling. And that was that. I realize now that they may well have been taking in the delight of that good news privately and in their own way. I know we were. We brought home our newborn daughter, put her in a chair, you know, a sit-up seat, put that sit-up seat on the coffee table, and stared. And I have no idea how long that went on. But I'm reasonably certain it went on for a while. Until we finally looked at one another and said, I guess we have to get on with living and looking after this new feature in our lives. We're gathering today to have that moment that moment of staring and wondering and delighting in the birth of Jesus. This is not just a looking at somebody else's baby pictures. It's not Mary and Joseph's kid and isn't that sweet and oh how cute and look at the dimple. No, this is a birth for us, for all. Jesus comes as our brother, 
and a heavenly creator who is our parent. And this birth reminds us, even makes us, one family. We belong together. And this good news, this birth, is for us. And so we are invited to do what many of the characters in the Bible story that we have just heard told to us do. They reflect on the significance of the story, of this birth. They, uh, shepherds, are fearful and amazed. And they amaze others by telling their story. Mary treasures and ponders all that is transpiring. And the shepherds return to their lives, but not unchanged. They return quite transformed, praising God and thanking God for God's faithfulness to be present with us, because this birth is about God being with us, about us being part of God's family. And so tonight, as we gather virtually, and as we sing songs and share in communion, we are invited to receive the good news with wonder and joy, to ponder now how it has already changed us, how we are already more able to hope, more able to delight, even in the midst of some very challenging times. And we are able to take that joy and to have it feed us, that we can begin to wonder, how will we nurture the life of God in and amongst us? And how will we realize all the possibilities of God's love that are set before us tonight in this birth, in this child, in Jesus the Christ? Amen. With Mary, the mother of Jesus, let us say our wholehearted yes to God. I believe in God, the Father. I believe in Jesus, God's Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we praise you. These are the prayers of the people. People of God, all gifts we receive and give are small tokens of the greatest gift of all, the gift of God's own self, wondrously present in the vulnerable baby born in Bethlehem. With our hope renewed, let us offer our prayers to the God who is born to us at Christmas. I will conclude each prayer request with the words, God of love and wonder, and I ask you to respond saying, hear our prayer. That the peace proclaimed by angels in the shepherd's fields might be realized in every field of war, every street corner, and every home. God of love and wonder, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That the child born to us will find in, find in our hearts warm welcome in the ways we care for those experiencing, experiencing homelessness, and hunger. God of love and wonder, hear, hear our prayer. That you, O oh God, will be near to those who labor on behalf of others, nurses and doctors, police officers and firefighters, gas station attendants, bus drivers, and all those whose work prevents them from being at home with their loved ones this evening. God of love and wonder, hear our prayer that the blessed hope we celebrate this night will be fulfilled in our loved ones who have died. Those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in the greater light of God's near presence. God of love and wonder, 
Hear Hear our prayer. God of all time and space, renew us this night. Strengthen us for service as we rejoice in the birth of Jesus Christ, who is God with us. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give, praise to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, for the gift of a world full of wonder, and for our life which comes from you. By your power you sustain the universe. Glory to you forever and ever. You created us to love you with all our heart and to love each other as ourselves. But we rebel against you by the evil that we do. In Jesus, your Son, you bring healing to our world and gather us into one great family. Therefore, with all who serve you on earth and in heaven, we praise your wonderful name as we say. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you thanks and praise, loving Father, because in sending Jesus, your Son, to us, you showed us how much you love us, He cares for the poor and the hungry. He suffers with the sick and the rejected. Betrayed and forsaken, he did not strike back, but overcame hatred with love. On the cross, he defeated the power of sin and death. By raising him from the dead, you show us the power of your love to bring new life to all your people. Glory to you forever and ever. On the night before he gave up his life for us, Jesus at supper with his friends took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing gave it to his friends and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which is shed for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Glory to you forever. Gracious God, with this bread and wine we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus and we offer ourselves to you in him. Send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts, that we may know the presence of Jesus in the breaking of bread and share in the life of the family of your children. Glory to you forever and ever. Father, you call us to be your servants. Fill us with the courage and love of Jesus that all the world may gather in joy at the table of your kingdom. 
We sing your praise, Almighty Father, through Jesus our Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life. And that life is the light of the world. God here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. As those gathered here receive communion bread, I invite you in a time of quiet prayer to welcome the love of God born in and through Jesus Christ and to us all. May Christ, our infant Savior, give us the joy of the Bethlehem shepherds, the awe of the worshiping sages, and the humility and love of the Holy Family. May we become as little children, joyous, trusting, and delighting in God's presence in our lives and in our world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and among us and remain with us always. Amen. Our hymn is Joy to the World.
It's uh, my uh, privilege to express thanks to those who've made our pivot towards digital worship possible and who have planned for a long time how we would celebrate this evening in our family service. I want to thank Isabella Daly, and whose uh, storytelling idea was adapted for tonight. Jamie Barnes, our musician extraordinaire. Laura, Isabel, da Laura Barnes, Isabella Daly, and Isaac Barnes, our readers. Louise Briggs, our intercessor. Aidan Denome, who's behind the scenes making all things technical work. Bonnie White and the entire Altar Guild for all the efforts in decorating this space that we might have some nice camera shots for you to share. And to Jody Awesome, our parish administrator, who uh, was uh, chained to the desk for most of the last week or so, producing uh, one after another uh, order of service and PowerPoint for our worship services. It is a privilege and a joy to wish you and your family Merry Christmas from this family from the clergy, warden, staff, members of St. Paul's Westdale, a Merry Christmas. God bless. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.